Hey everyone, this week I'm finally going to review my favorite fragrance in my collection for you, talk a little bit about it, plus I'm going to give you some first impressions of some other fragrances from that house that I have as samples, so stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little story. So uh, I start my modern collection uh, and I'm trying to figure out, kind of smell things. I have a lot of experience smelling stuff. Uh, as my wife will tell you, anytime that we go to a, a grocery store or something like that, I'll smell every candle they've got, every bath soap they've got, every body wash they've got. Uh, so I like smelling stuff, but when it came to actual wearable fragrances, um, you know, you have a whole wide range of stuff, notes that are not used in there. One of them is vetiver. So I was watching Ash on Jen Sense, and in one of his videos, he recommended cowboy grass. And I was like, okay, well, sounds interesting. So I ordered a four pack of samples from um, Dies and Durga, and I sprayed this stuff on a test strip, and I took a sniff of it. I'm actually gonna spray it here because uh, I've got the bottle of cowboy grass. I don't know if I mentioned cowboy grass at the start, but that's what this is, if you couldn't tell from the thumbnail and the title. So, um, I took my first sniff, and I was like, whoa, get away from me. What the heck is that? It's so uh, aromatic, um, which wasn't even really a concept that I kind of appreciated uh, when I started this, but the way that it's very expansive, um, took me aback and I had to like step away from it because it was kind of shocking and kind of jarring. So I set the step strip down and I go, well, you win some, you lose some. And I kind of walked away from it. And then like 10 minutes later, I come back to it and I'm like, okay, well, I'll sniff, sniff it again. I sniffed it again. And this time, because I kind of knew what I was in for, when I smelled it, I could actually kind of appreciate it a little bit more. It wasn't quite as jarring as the first time I smelled it. And this fragrance taught me something very, very special, which is why I like it the most. It's not necessarily uh, the best fragrance that I own, though it is the one that I like the most, and it's for this reason. It taught me that unraveling a fragrance, understanding what is, is uh, composing a fragrance, what they're going for, can really help me to appreciate and enjoy a fragrance a lot more. Once I started to sniff this and I started to actually be able to smell what's underneath uh, uh, just the top aromatics and stuff like that, I was able to actually kind of unravel this thing and really appreciate just what a beautiful scent this is and how awesome vetiver as a note is itself. So I actually did some prep this time and I wrote down some notes about these fragrances because I want to share with you guys, give you guys like really good feedback on these because in particular, um, cowboy grass itself I think is a really amazing fragrance. I'll tell you a little bit about the the scent itself. I do think that they nail Southwest America with this. I, I lived in SoCal for a little while and I spent some time putting around in Southwest America. It's dry sagebrush and that's the first thing that you get from this is the sagebrush. I was actually with my friends a few weeks ago and uh, I saw a plant and I was like I wonder, grabbed a leaf off of it kind of rubbed it between my fingers and sniffed and it was in fact sage and I was like I identified sage in the wild I felt really proud of myself I was really stoked and it reminded me of this cowboy grass because there's an overload of sage in that so the first thing that you get from this apart from like the citruses and things like that is you're gonna get a huge dose of sage and sitting in there with that is vetiver and people describe vetiver as woodsy I think I feel like those people have never mowed lawns before um, when I smell vetiver, I smell grass. I know that it comes from the root of the, the grass or whatever is how they get vetiver, but to me, it just smells like straight up grass. So you have this dry sage brush up top, a little bit of, of a juicy citrus there as well, but really it's about this vetiver and it's this dusty vetiver. And um, one of the things I appreciate about Dies and Durga is the way in which they add notes in a subtle way that gives you a vibe. So. You won't necessarily smell it unless you dig in and try and find it. Um, but in this one, for instance, there is like a leather note, especially in the dry down, you can kind of pick it up and it is evocative of these like dusty cowboy boots. I, and that's, I feel like a great way to describe this. This is the smell of cowboy boots. You know, it's got the, the little bits of sage on it. It's got the, the grass on it, a little bit of dusty leather. And um, 
I think they even suggest that there might even be like a little bit of revolver varnish in there, which I feel like is, it's possible. Um, so I think this is a fascinating fragrance. I think this is the best vetiver fragrance I've ever smelled. I really enjoy Ancre Noir. If you want to just spend $20 uh, to just get some good vetiver, that's a great way to go. Uh, but I think Cowboy Grass itself, I will always have a bottle of this because I just love I love the smell, but I also love what it taught me about fragrance. This is a fun fragrance. It's one that uh, doesn't get old when you smell it throughout the day. It's versatile. This works in any season and would be just as welcome in the office as it would be at a wedding. Sometimes maybe even a little bit medicinal to some, but with that dirty edge, that will give you the feeling that it, you don't smell it directly. Uh, yeah, I, I just think this is an incredible fragrance. If you haven't, you should absolutely um, Get your hands on a sample and smell this. Like I said, I mean, you could tell. I've, I've put a dent in this bottle. I just got this, I don't know, um, seven or eight months ago, but put a sizable dent in it for the size of my collection because you can just wear this at any time. It is such a beautiful fragrance. That is Cowboy Grass. Now I'm gonna give you some early impressions because I've worn these, but I haven't spent tons of time with them of samples that I got recently from uh, Dias and Durga. I wanted to figure out what my next love from the house is going to be. So I'm gonna, I took some notes. I'll give you those and I'm gonna to, uh, spray them on strip as well so I can give you fresh takes on them. So to find the strips, there we go. Uh, first up is going to be Burning Barbershop. So uh, this one for me, I don't have a lot of, of barbershop fragrances. Uh, this makes me want them. Uh, I've smelled a couple. This is definitely the most interesting. And uh, what this fragrance is, is all about contrasts. So the barbershop accord, you're gonna have your mint, lavender, and some citruses. Uh, contrasting that with the smoke and the incense and the burning wood, because I don't think it's just like a, a, a smoke that you get from this. I think you actually get like the burning wood, like that dirty, charcoal -y burning wood. And um, it really does smell like those two things mixed. So you get this massive contrast between the two that is so interesting. You have the sweetness of the mint with the bitterness of the fire, um, the hot and the cold. There's an inherent cleanliness of the Barbershop Accord. And again, you get the dirtiness of a fire and the destruction. So uh, I, I feel like this is a really interesting exploration and um, it's a very interesting fragrance. With everything that I've just described about the contrast, I feel like it still needs to be stayed. Overall, it feels like a very clean fragrance. It's a very, it feels like, it, well, I've worn it once. It was very pleasant to wear. Whenever I'd catch wafts, it felt very clean. So. I do want to get a full bottle of this. Didn't think I was gonna actually, I kind of just got this as a curiosity, um, but I, I like this one a lot. This is actually the one that I ordered uh, the Discovery set to smell was Bowmaker, uh, cause it just sounds weird and interesting. Uh, the idea, I believe, it's kind of like a violin with like a bow, that, that whole thing. And with this, you get that, you get it like, you, not pencil shavings and not like wood like on a tree, like behind me. You know that smell of like cut wood that you get on like the inside of a guitar. I don't know if I'm the only one who's ever like stuck their head up to like a violin or a guitar and like smelled the inside of one. They really got it with this. And even like an element of like that varnish, not like to the point where it's like nose hair curling, you know, but like just elements of it. Again, talking about vibes with this house and really with their motto being armchair travel, uh, this is an example of that. Like this really feels like it's taking me to uh, that's that place. Uh, let me see what I wrote down here about it. Yeah, okay, so I feel like this is like, I really like this fragrance, I think it's super interesting, but I also am f not sure when I could ever wear it because of how serious it feels. Uh, this is a no-nonsense fragrance. It, it takes itself seriously. It wants to be on someone who's giving a lecture in a university or like the head of the library system at the University of Washington or something like that. Uh, it's for a no-nonsense person uh, dry, woodsy, serious, professional, but like still likable, warm, you know, in the same way that that wood scents typically are warm. So it's a very interesting fragrance. Don't know if I want a full bottle. I want to keep giving this some wearings, but I do like it. Next up is uh, one of the more interesting ones. I still haven't looked at the notes for this. I should, 
because I'm going to talk about it, describe this, and the way I'm going to describe it, I'm sure, is completely wrong. But this is for Mississippi medicine. Uh, <laughs> Again, this is one that I ordered kind of like, somewhat expecting, like as a challenge to the house of Dias and Durga. I'm like, it doesn't sound like something I'd like. Let's see what you can do. And they deliver one of the most engaging scents that I, f I feel like I've smelled in a long time. It's so weird, but in a way that I am so on board with. Uh, let's see here. Dirty, swampy, gives me the vibe of, of the smell of our camping gear, like when you're first getting out for the, the spring or the summertime. There's kind of that, that musty, like almost mildewy. I mean, I, I hate to say that because like, oh, that doesn't sound pleasant, but actually a, a lot of moss and fragrances comes across to me as slightly mildewy in a way that I'm really intri intrigued by. But So for me, for this one, uh, this is, also got the woods in there as well. Um, it's such an interesting scent. I, I really, I really can't tell you a lot of what's going on in here besides the woods. I could just tell you the way it makes me feel and what it makes me think of. Mississippi medicine. I don't know if I get a whole lot of medicinal notes off of this. Maybe I do, and I just don't know that's what I'm smelling. See, that's the thing is like, I, this is one of the ones I definitely want a bottle of this because I feel like there's so much for me to unravel and unwrap in this. Um, it's such an intriguing scent. It's the, this is the kind of scent that you smell on someone and uh, like you just kind of like maybe try and get another whiff to figure out what the heck it is you just smelled. Doesn't smell dirty like in a, like again, if it smells dirty, it smells dirty in a clean sort of way. Uh, it's evocative of dirt without smelling like a trash heap. Uh, but it does kind of have that. There's something earthy about this. I don't know what it is, but I freaking love it and I want to keep smelling it. It's kind of how I felt about um, the first time I smelled cowboy grass. Um, it reminds me of this scene from Star Trek Generations. I'm going to be really nerdy for a second. There's a, a scene in Star Trek Generations where Data has gotten his emotion chip. He's an android on the Starship Enterprise. He's gotten an emotion chip for the first time, so he's feeling emotions and he goes and he tries a drink and he hates it but he loves the sensation that he gets from feeling that sensation of hate so much that he wants to keep drinking it. This is not that, I don't hate this, but it is one of those things where I'm like, what, what is that? More please, you know? Um, so yeah, I super love this one. Weird, fascinating, pleasant. I, I love wearing this though, because it is a really interesting smell. I gotta dig into it some more. Next up, I have the one of the namesakes. Uh, there's a DS and a Durga fragrance, and DS is for David Seth Moltz, who is the head perfumer, and that is what I've got right here. So, um, this is another one that uh, I didn't look up the notes, I just ordered it because I was like, well, he put his name on it, so I'm curious uh, to see like what his signature scent is. I don't even know if it's a signature scent, but the scent that he kind of ascribes to himself. And um, I did look up the notes after I smelled it because I was like, I have, I have zero clue. Again, vibes with this one. And this is one of the most fascinating scents I've ever smelled. I get green veggies off the top. I get uh, spices. <sighs> it's such an interesting saffron. I know saffron's in there. I get that. Saffron is part, it can be part of a leather cord, so like I kind of get that sometimes. I'm like, wait a minute, there's that saffron. So I'm kind of still training my nose, but oh, this is such an interesting one. And I will say it too, with this one in particular, this is a very long lasting fragrance. Uh, it lasted a really long time. Um, I think that he said that this is supposed to be evocative of his time in India. And I totally get that. I spent a month in Hyderabad for work and I went out and explored the city quite a bit on my own. Um, pretty much every day after work and on the weekends, I was out in the city kind of exploring it. And this does remind me of the old town. Uh, I get like the spice market and stuff like that. It's just a really interesting fragrance. I think there's some cardamom in there as well. 
maybe this is the one that kind of brings me around on cardamom. Um, it's just such an interesting fragrance uh, that, 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 again, has depth. This is one where I don't know um, if I would get a full bottle of it because it does have so much scent memory attached to it for me. Wearing it feels strange. When I smell it, I do get those wafts and it is kind of like jarring me, you know, making me think of 2017 when I was in India. But I like that, so I don't know, again, Everything I smell from this house has complexity and richness to it that, that makes me want to discover more, learn more, uh, you know, uncover it, unravel its mysteries, and this is no different. It's a very interesting, warm, spicy fragrance. The spices, though, are very smooth, like, again, maybe even a little incense in there. I don't know, it's, it's tough, like it's, there's just so much going on, but it doesn't feel busy. It feels complete, it feels whole. But it's like a million things come together to make one scent. This is like, this is like all four weeks of my trip in India summed up into one scent. Like if you fast forward and crush it all together. So that's I think part of it is like I'm smelling this and going, that's so many different things, so many different experiences all wrapped up in one. It's beautiful though. I love this house. Everything I smell from them is fantastic. I want to keep getting more uh, bottles from them. I think after the most recent Discovery set, um, Mississippi Medicine is probably near the top from them next for me. Mississippi Medicine or um, Burning Barbershop. I think those are both really interesting fragrances. They fill an interesting spot as well in my collection. Uh, so. If you smelled from the house, please let me know in the comments. If you have uh, other favorites from them that you've smelled, please let me know. Uh, any suggestions you have, I appreciate it. Uh, drop a comment and uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks.